from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering NAB 2017. Brought to you by HGST. Hey, welcome back to theCUBE. We are live at the NAB 2017 conference, the National Association of Broadcasters. Great event, over 100,000 people. Wow, amazing. I'm Lisa Martin, very excited to introduce you to our next guest. Dave Clack, the CEO of Squarebox Systems. Hi Dave, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Great to have you here. Now you are a veteran of NAB. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Yeah, this year's event, really this overarching theme of the MET effect, convergence of media, entertainment, technology that used to be distinct. With that theme and all the buzz that's going on here, what are some of your observations on day, this isn't day one for you, but day one yeah. for most of us? Well, I think the show is far busier than I've seen it in recent years, and so we've been overwhelmed uh, on our booth this morning. Uh, and I think really folks being able to manage extremely complex storage landscapes has been a real theme for us uh, in, the, in the discussion so far this morning. Um, in addition, you know, folks are so much moving towards the cloud that people have been talking about it for years, but suddenly it seems there's been a step change. People want to do it right now. And so we're really noticing that in the discussion so far, at least um, this morning. Yeah. Do you think that's because cloud technology has matured so much as have cloud users? Yeah, I think I think exactly. I think uh, I think exactly both. So the technology is starting to mature, and the bandwidth uh, is really getting there, so folks can use this stuff more effectively. And people are getting more used to it in their day-to-day -day lives. So, you know, everyone's phone backs up to the cloud and everyone just gets used to it just being always on and always working. And so I think a lot of the confidence that people need to have when you're shooting content that's valuable and you need to have deadlines you're going to meet, then people are getting used to the fact that the cloud can be as reliable, and even more reliable, than a lot of the traditional storage and, uh, and production um, approaches. Yeah. And one of the themes along those lines that we've heard today on the program is Speed and agility are absolutely key. Oh, yeah. we're, we're hearing that studio will shoot something, a particular scene, and then think, you know what, that would have been great in virtual reality, and do the entire thing again. And then that compounds cost and storage challenges, but needing things really quickly. Another thing theme that we're hearing is, well, all of us are content creators, right? Yeah. We all have tablets and mobile devices. Yeah. We're not only consuming it in these ways, we're creating it in these ways. Yeah. And so it really becomes a challenge for whether it's broadcasters or film studios or even on the, on the sports and entertainment side of, of containing and kind of corralling this. Tell us a little bit about Squawk Box Systems. Who are, what are you delivering by way of media asset management and who are some of your key, um, key constituents, key sectors that you work with? Yeah, yeah, so, um, so our core product, CatDV, is all about helping people to find and reuse their content, um, saving time, saving money, saving stress, um, and a whole pile of kind of workflow orchestration, workflow automation. And so, you know, being able to find and reuse content is clearly really important with, when content is exploding in the way it has, and the ways that people consume content are exploding. And so, almost everybody, has a potential need for a system like CatDV uh, with this explosion of content. If you can't find your content, you just don't have it. It's just taking up space and money on some storage somewhere. Um, and so the main sectors in which, in which we work are, I guess we started and our focus on broadcast, production, post, um, but now everybody has media. And so we have a pile of customers, basketball, football, baseball, soccer, uh, in the sports market. Education, many universities use CatDV. Um, Nonprofits, lots of houses of worship use CatDV. Um, lots of corporates use CatDV. You know, training videos, uh, outreach, marketing, social media. You know, a lot of agencies, advertising use CatDV. So, you know, and there's a, really, there's a few really interesting kind of use cases. Things like uh, JPL, the history of space science right. in CatDV. You want to find out about the Mars rover or about all the space probe stuff. Look in CatDV. Um, so I think, so sports is a really interesting one. Uh, we, have, uh, we have a load of, maybe I think we've got probably 10 NFL teams, uh, and they have some really interesting workflows around uh, asset management. So, and in fact, I was chatting to some folks uh, from the Kansas City Chiefs uh, a few weeks ago, and what their workflow's done is really turned on their head the way that they make programming and content. And so, 
you imagine they go away to an away game, then what they'll do is they'll shoot their content, and on the plane on the way home, they'll log that content. They'll plug the camera cards into laptops, and they'll log that content, not just for tonight's show, which is clearly important, because tonight's coming soon, um, but to become part of the history of that sports team, but to become part of the historic record. Of course. Yeah. And so then, let's imagine in a year's time, we've got an athlete that's retiring, or that's got an award or something. They can go into our system, uh, and they can say, well, hey, Cat TV, find me the five-star clips for this athlete in this season wearing this number. Cat TV will come back with a long list of content, uh, be able to preview it, whether it's on active storage, on cloud storage, or wherever it is in this kind of complex landscape. And then Cat TV will be able to preview that media, put it into a rough cut, and then within a few minutes, you've got uh, a rough cut for you know, a pretty quality piece of programming that can then be made very cost effectively. So for them, it's really turned on the head the kind of psychology of program making and the psychology of logging. Uh, it really has become such a valuable thing that it's just part of their DNA then when they're making, making their content for their fans. Another thing that, speaking of fans, that really interested me and piqued my interest when I was reading that uh, Kansas City Chiefs case study on your website is what they're doing working with uh, Squarebox to really diversify and improve the fan experience. Because from a fan's perspective, they're able now to what, slice and dice different parts of the game and deliver it in multiple platforms. Can, tell us a little bit more about how you help sports teams, for example, really yeah. diversify engaging with their fans, which presumably to them is going to drive up revenue. Right, exactly. And I think that, that kind of talks to how many kind of endpoints there are where people can consume this content. Now, clearly folks, I think I heard that there are, it's getting on for that there are more mobile phones than there are TVs in the US now. So, and you know, I always consume my content on mobile devices yeah. now. <laughs> we have a TV, we watch films on it, but, right. <laughs> but that's about it. And so I think, so uh, being able to have content and then repurpose it extremely quickly for different, different workflows. So, okay, being able to broadcast to the satellite channel for the KCC, uh, that's great. But being able to take segments that are athlete profiles for websites, for Twitter, for social media, man, just being able to get that stuff out really quickly and in an automated fashion. So if you get people in the way, mistakes are made and things are slow. Right. So if you can just tick a few boxes and rely on content getting to the right place at the right time, then that is crucial. And so automation, big thing for us as CatDV, that is a, a real key thing when trying to, so trying try to manage this stuff cost effectively because while there's an explosion in demand, there isn't an explosion in budget. So, so how, how do people cope when there's all this demand for high quality content, but there isn't more money to right. pay for it to be? So walk us through that journey. Yeah. If you're talking to a Kansas City Chiefs or, or another sporting organization, help us understand how do you help them understand where to start, to your point, budgets are constrained, but the yeah. opportunity then, there for them to really gain much more yeah. from their existing digital assets is huge. What is that? journey that you help them go so, on? It's a really good question, and actually it's kind of what motivates me to be in the industry at, at all, because we make asset management products, we think they're great, um, but asset management doesn't exist in isolation. There's cameras and networking and storage and archiving and distribution. And so the first conversation that we have when engaging with any customer, sports included, is what's your problem? What are you trying to achieve? And we end up having really interesting conversations about folks' businesses. How is it that they're trying to get work done? What's the content creation process like? So how do you shoot? What do you shoot on? And so we have to, we have to almost follow the life of a file through from whether it's being created as a piece of uh, FX or whether it's uh, some content that's being shot on a camera. Well, how does that get from where it's being made to the consumer and then how does it get reused so it becomes an asset rather than a liability? Uh, meanwhile, making sure that it's safe, it can't get lost, it can't get stolen, and all that kind of stuff. So we end up almost doing business consulting about the, con the creative process of making content. And that is really fascinating, and it's only when we have a really good view of that workflow can we recommend, well, how's the best way to use our stuff, and how's the best way for that to work with storage. And you brought up something about safety and security. Cybersecurity is a huge issue. Completely, yeah. And we, we see it 
and all that, we talked to a lot of different industries here on theCUBE, and, and in some industries, we had uh, um, Ted Harrington on the program a little bit ago, who's a, one of the security experts, and said in some industries, it's sort of nice to have. And more in media and entertainment, it's really starting to become part of the culture. Yeah. Is that something that you're experiencing? Oh, very much so. Absolutely. So, and then there's always this balance, right? So, everybody wants their content everywhere. And we find often that execs say, oh, I, I don't want to log in, I, don't want to, I just want you to send me the video. It's like, well, we can do that, and we send you the video, and it's enormously simple, but it's not secure. And so what we try and do is have a balance. So we have simple tools that are secure, and we have, we have many government agencies and military agencies that use our software, so we love working with those guys. They help us to improve our product and to harden it because there are so many well-publicized cases of content being stolen. Um, so you know, we, we try to get a good balance between hyper-secure and locked down and very usable, and we work with customers to kind of choose how far down that path they want to get. And you know, there are, there are some simple things you can do too. If you're sharing content over the internet, then putting nice watermarks on stuff, uh, whether they be visible watermarks or invisible ones that are uh, kind of burnt in, then you know, that can really stop people misusing content or stop people making mistakes about where content's going to be broadcast because it's really clear. You're not going to put stuff up if it's got a big label over it. So, right. Yeah. Um, you mentioned working with different types of, of uh, customers, broadcasts, sports, houses of worship. Yeah. From a collaboration perspective, talk to us about how um, Squarebox facilitates collaboration. Yeah, absolutely. So there are kind of three core things that CatDV does. Automate, collaborate, and organize, right? So um, for this show, one of our biggest announcements is CatDV Social. And so what CatDV Social lets you do is to have a conversation, real time, a bit like a Skype or a Slack conversation, either between a couple of people or a group, about a collaborative, a collaborative event. So we're making some content. You know, I need, I need this sound file right now. Um, so being able to have that real time collaborative conversation is a new feature in CatDV. We're previewing it at the show, and I have to say it's getting a huge amount of interest, it's, uh, it's great. Fantastic, yeah. well Dave, thank you so much for being on the program. We wish you nothing but continued success at Squarebox. Thank you very much. And we want to thank you for watching theCUBE, again live from Las Vegas at NAB 2017. I'm Lisa Martin, stick around, we'll be right back. Mm -hmm.